So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and Apple finally did it after about six, seven, maybe even eight months of teasing Universal Control at WWDC last year in June. They finally brought it out with iPadOS 15.4 Beta 1 and macOS 12.3 Beta 1 Monterey or Monterey, whatever you guys want to call it. But I've been playing with it for a few days now and I wanted to go over some of the limitations that it has, all the features that it does bring, you know, whether it works in clamshell mode with macOS, does it work with dual displays, does it work with Bluetooth accessories, all those questions are going to be answered in this video. So without further ado, let's check out exactly what Universal Control brings because overall it's been amazing even on the Beta 1 and it's everything that Apple has touted since WWDC last year. But without further ado, let's get into it. Okay everybody, so let's get right into it. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is actually how to set it up because there's actually two ways to get this all set up. The first way is actually not doing anything. Like as long as you have iPadOS 15.4 beta one installed and then also macOS 12.3 beta one installed, then just having your two devices next to each other and kind of forcing it with your mouse on the Mac side will then begin the universal control process. So you don't have to manually do anything in the settings if you don't want to. If you just have them side by side, the Mac will recognize that the iPad is on the left or the right hand side. And then if you move your mouse to the direction of the iPad for a few times or for a few seconds, it'll then move over to the iPad, give you that little bar on the right hand side to let you know like, hey, there's a mouse coming into your iPad, do you want it? and you just keep on going and then you're kind of using universal control naturally and organically without having setting anything up. But if you are in a situation where you wanna manually set it up, it's set up just like any other display. So go into your system preferences, go to display settings, then on the bottom left, go to add a display and then you're gonna have two options because you do have the option to still use sidecar. So don't forget about sidecar. Using your iPadOS device as a secondary display for macOS is still possible, but if you wanna use the keyboard and mouse function of it, you're gonna to go to that second option, or I guess here it's listed as the first option. From there, it's all set up, and then you can orientate where you want the iPad screen to be in comparison to your macOS screen. So it works just like any other extended display, but if you wanna set it up manually, that is how you set it up manually. So the first thing that I did want to test out was just how well it all worked, right? Like how were all, all the peripherals worked? Like if I'm using, you know, my peripherals on my Mac OS computer and then using it on the iPad OS computer. So those are all things that I wanted to test out and we're going to have B-roll of everything kind of running. So the first thing we're going to test out is to see how the peripherals from Mac OS work on the iPad OS and then vice versa. So clearly you're able to use the Mac OS trackpad on the MacBook Air to do whatever you need to on the iPad Pro with iPad OS. So that works. The keyboard on Mac OS will work on iPad OS. Then the same thing happens on the other side, but one thing that you do have to make sure, if you want your peripherals, let's say from your Magic Keyboard on your iPad Pro to work on Mac OS, you have to start from the iPad Pro and not vice versa. So if you're using your Mac OS peripherals, so your keyboard and your trackpad all over the place, and then you switch over to the Magic Keyboard and you're still on Mac OS, then it won't work. You're still gonna wanna go with your keyboard and trackpad on the Magic Keyboard over to Mac OS for it all to be recognized and for it to be able to work. And then once you follow that mindset, it's gonna take a little bit of while and you're gonna have to be intentional about it in the beginning, but then everything works, right? Your trackpad works, your keyboard works, your keyboard shortcuts will work regardless of what operating system you're using. So overall, it's been working as advertised on the simplest level and on its simplest form. Another thing that I did wanna test out was how it worked with file transfer and data transfer. So the first thing I tried out was literally just grabbing something from my Mac OS desktop, dragging it over to a plain home screen iPad screen and see if I can like drop the file and maybe it'll open up the files app or something like that. So it doesn't do that. So if you're trying to grab something from your file system on your Mac and then move it over to your iPad Pro without being in the file system, nothing's gonna happen. It's just gonna disappear and your file won't be transferred. So you have to be, again, intentional about all the actions that you're doing. So if you wanna move something from the files finder on your Mac OS computer down to your iPad OS computer or your iPad OS tablet, whatever you guys wanna call it now at this point, you have to actually open the files app and transfer it in there. Now, in some instances, it will work depending on what applications you're in. So if the application on your iPad is known to take in you know, files and data just naturally, so something like LumaFusion, you can grab a file from your Mac computer and drag it right into a LumaFusion timeline and it's gonna work. And the reason it's gonna work is because LumaFusion is built whether or not you're using universal control to act like that. So as long as your iPad apps act in that way to be able to take in data and take in files, no matter, it's, no matter if it's from the file system manager inside of the iPad or any other file, then it's still gonna be able to work that way. So if you wanna drop something into Affinity Photo, you can. If you wanna drop something directly into your Photos application, you can. So as long as the app is built that way, then it's gonna work. And same thing, vice versa. So with the Files app on the iPad Pro, you can grab something from the iPad Pro and move it over to your desktop on your Mac OS computer. And again, the Mac OS is a lot more receptive to files, so you can drop files pretty much anywhere from your iPad OS computer over to your Mac OS computer. 
One that I was curious about trying out was actually moving Safari tabs when both Safaris are open. So what I did was I opened up Safari in iPadOS, then I opened up Safari in macOS, and then I tried to drag a Safari tab from one to the other, and that didn't work. So the moment you try to move a tab, it will actually won't let you leave the screen, regardless if you're on iPadOS or on macOS. So I thought maybe having some sort of intercompatibility with native macOS apps would work out, but that doesn't really work out, unfortunately. So it's strictly kind of narrowed down to just usability. So being able to use peripherals on each other's computer or operating system and things like that, but then also being able to move files. But outside of that, from an application standpoint, being able to move apps and things like that, that's not gonna work. So don't try to move an application from macOS down to iPadOS. Maybe eventually, little by little, they'll do updates to iPadOS and universal control. To be able to move something like Safari from macOS over to iPadOS and vice versa, I can see that being a real use case, but for right now, something like that does not work. So the perfect situation is having your iPad Pro and your MacBook Air open next to each other side by side. Maybe you're, you know, you're working remotely, you're on the go, you're at a coffee shop, you know, that's a prime situation. But what if you're somebody like me who's at a desk all day, you have two displays up at all time, you have your laptop in clamshell mode and you're using something called Display Link because the M1 computers don't natively support dual displays. So that was going to be the biggest predicament and the biggest thing that I wanted to take on with Universal Control. Like can I use my iPad Pro in iPad OS as my main hub to control my Mac OS experience? And the answer is, yeah, you really can. It just, it just depends on how you physically have things set up. So as you guys can see, I'm going to have some B-roll. My main setup is, is a dual display setup with a Dell USB-C hub in order to get video to both of those displays. And then what I did was I manually set up universal control through the settings like I showed you earlier in the video, put the iPad Pro screen to be below both of the screens, so right smack in the middle of them. So whenever I move down, I'm into the iPad screen. Now it does work, but the only thing you have to be careful with is how well it works. So first question answered, does it work when your Mac is in clamshell mode? Yes, it does. So you're able to use your iPad Pro or any iPad running iPad OS 15 and higher or 15.4 and higher and still use it, use universal control when your laptop is in clamshell mode. So check, that works. Does it work with external displays? Yes, it does work. The only thing that you have to be careful with was, is again, how you're physically having it set up. Because when I grab the mouse and move it to how I currently have it set up and move it into my iPad, then it's kind of starting multitasking for my iPad. So keep that in mind. It keeps wanting to start multitasking because technically if you drop down and start up multitasking, you can start up multitasking that way on the iPad Pro. So I can see this working maybe if you have an iPad all the way to the left or directly in the center of both of the displays and things like that, then it's gonna work as advertised, right? It does work so the Magic Keyboard and the trackpad can be used to control all of your Mac OS system functions and bringing it over back to iPad OS. And even if you want to, the Bluetooth peripherals that are attached to your Mac OS computer that's in clamshell mode will still work with your iPad Pro. So I have this Atechi keyboard in my Logitech Anywhere S2 that's plugged in via Bluetooth to my Mac OS computer, but I'm still able to use it on the iPad Pro through iPad OS because of universal control. So that was the biggest use case that I wanted to figure out with universal control. So overall universal control, it, it works as advertised. You're able to use the peripherals from each Mac OS device or iPad OS and use them to control the other one and vice versa. You're able to move files just like you said you would. And you can use multiple screens, dual display. You can use multiple operating systems. You can use multiple iPads if you want to. So overall, very happy with it. And I'm sure Apple is gonna keep iterating on it to make it that much better. So let's get out of here and finish up this video. So as you guys saw, Universal Control, even in its beta state right now, in its first beta, is working much better than I even anticipated. I originally thought it was gonna be kind of a gimmick that you could only do with a Mac computer and your iPad Pro or any iPad for that matter running 15.4 and higher, but it goes beyond that, right? You have file transfer capabilities, you have the ability to use it, even with things like Display Link. So the M1 processor natively cannot support two monitors directly from the MacBook Air. So what I was able to do is use Display Link, but even when using Display Link to manage those two monitors, I'm able to use my iPad Pro with universal control with those two monitors and have it at the correct orientation so I know exactly what's going on. Now it's a little bit finicky sometimes with having the iPad Pro underneath both the displays because that is how you summon multitasking now. So it does get a little finicky, but it does work even with things like Display Link and third-party softwares, like I mentioned, like Display Link. So overall, I'm very happy with all the features that it has. Yes, there are some limitations, but what can you expect? These are two separate operating systems. Yes, they're built by one company. Yes, it's kind of in that same ecosystem and wall garden, but think about it. These are two completely different operating systems that yes, run on the same M1 chip, but what's crazy is that with different peripherals attached to different hardware, you're still able to, from a software standpoint, control everything with just one set of peripherals, which is freaking crazy. And being able to move files in between operating systems is another thing that's 
freaking crazy. It's I've never heard of anything like that, and I'm sure people have before. But having this as a standard feature, as a native feature between iPad OS and Mac OS is a godsend. But that's gonna do for this video. If you guys still have some lingering questions, I'll be in the comment section down below trying to answer as much as I can and maybe do a follow-up video if there are enough questions. But overall, Universal Control gets my stamp of approval. I'm really, really enjoying it. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys made it to the end, leave a little dolphin right here. It really helps with me figuring out who makes it to the end of these videos and I'm super grateful for all the people that do. But that's gonna do it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, Universal Control, it's the real deal and it's only gonna get better with every beta iteration and then that final release. Peace.